Matthew chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, virgins, not bride, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, no supplies. That's what they had. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Proverbs 31, 18. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. It's not the church age. Church age is told to go. It's not The church age is not a time of resting. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. No trump, no clouds. Then arose, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. They left them on. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to, the, to them that sell. And buy for yourselves. They're unprepared. And remember we talked about the servant. When the Lord comes. Finds him not doing what he's supposed to be doing. They're supposed to have oil. There was none. And while they went to buy. The bridegroom came. And they that were ready. Went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Very I say unto you, I know you not. Christ going to reject any of his bride? If they didn't have anything prepared? Not so. It's not church age. Watch therefore, for, you, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now the the proper thing, if you were to teach this for the church, is always have your lamp ready to go when the Lord does come. Be the light. And when the Lord comes and raptures his church, or if you die, don't be caught with no light. For Jesus is the light. For the kingdom of heaven. He's still talking to his disciples. They've asked him, what's the end of the time? We're, we're still going on, even though we broke to a chapter 25. It's still the same subject. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Luke 12, 48. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now, Jewish is a talent. I mean, see, a talent is Jewish money. We use dollar and pounds. Now, you can apply this spiritually if you want for an outline. God gives us talents. And what we do with our talents will be rewarded, but it's not based upon our salvation. But watch as we read. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. 100%. Likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. 100%. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. Judgment. It's not how much you got, it's what did you do with what you got. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, and behold, I've gained beside them five talents more. He's got ten. He's got a hundred percent. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. 
Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Into the joy of the Lord for a Jewish person would be the kingdom of heaven. The land grant. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou livest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside him. He's got four. He's got six lacking of the first man, but still, he's got a hundred percent. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful sir. He gets the same. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. Other people do the work of, of, of your work, Lord. That's what he's saying. You you want this guy that had the, had the five talent. He did your work. The guy that had the two talent. He did your work. I'm not doing your work. That's what he's saying. Reaping where thou hast not sown. Altogether, the, the, the man gets seven more talents than what he started with. Supposed to have eight more talents, but he doesn't get it. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not strawed, and that is to spread, to scatter. Like the, the parable of the sower, he took the seed and he scattered it out. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, there thou hast that is thine. Zero percent. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not. Backing what the guy said. And gather where I have not strolled. That's, that's how the words of the guy himself. Now this is what you are supposed to do. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury, more than what I gave you. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which has ten talents, judgment. For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he, has, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he had, now, this is where you get, not the church age. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth hell. Here's a guy that God gives him something. And when the Lord comes, he produces nothing. And he goes to hell. You got two guys. He's got five. He produces 100%. And he gets a well done. You got a guy who gets two. He produces 100%. He gets a well done. For the Christian, we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And all our works will be challenged at the fire. Not our souls, but our works. And as a result of that, we don't go to hell. We, we get or we lose crowns. This is not church age doctrine. But you can apply the talents. There are many people out there who have been given one talent. You take the, this this uh, music industry. There's been a lot of black women who come from, from Baptist churches. They've taken their one talent that God has given them to sing, and they put it in the earth. They put it to the world. And you look at the end of their life and how they died and what they died, what misery they had. They end up with nothing. Are they saved? I have no idea. If God's giving you a talent, use it for his honor and glory. When the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, shall come in his glory, second advent, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory in New Jerusalem, on the land of the throne of David, Jewish, and before him shall be gathered all nations, we're going to read about that in a minute. 
and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats you're supposed to part the sheep from the goats in your life that's what Jesus does division is a Bible doctrine and he shall set the sheep on his right hand that's the best part that's the best hand but the goats on the left I'm surprised people have got offended who are left-handed then shall the king capital K say unto them on the on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom what kingdom the kingdom he's sitting as king so all this kingdom of heaven chapter 24 and 25 is the millennial kingdom spoken out if you read scripture with scripture and you keep going and not just take a verse and put it on the wall The king say unto his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. How's that for a salvation to these people? God knew, foreknowledge, not Calvin, that there would be nations, we're going to read about, that would go into the millennium. For I, Jesus Christ, was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in naked and he clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came on to me you see all that the Antichrist you see all the stuff you can't get unless you receive the 666 you can't get food you can't get water no one's gonna invite you in you're not gonna be able to buy clothes you're not going to be able to get health care, and Satan will be putting you in jail. And Jesus took it personally, as we're going to read. He says, me, I, I, me, I, Jesus speaking. To a whole group of people who don't even know. He's speaking to the disciples about a future group of people. Then shall the righteous answer him, the sheep, saying, Lord, when saw we when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? And when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, and naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick and in prison that came unto thee? They're going to stand before Jesus Christ and say, we never did that to you. We didn't even know who you were. And the king, capital K, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as he have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, go to John 1 11, check that one out. You have done it unto me. What is Jesus saying? What is the time period that just came after what we're reading now? The Great Tribulation. The Antichrist is forcing people in order to eat and live to receive the mark. If you don't receive the mark, you don't eat or live. It's an abomination for Jews to receive that mark. If a Jew is going to do right, he is not going to take that remark. And he's also ending up in prison by the Antichrist. And what's going on? There are nations who are going to take care of those Jews. They are going to feed them. They're going to give them water. They're going to visit them. They're going to take care of their health needs. And they're not doing it for salvation. They're doing it because they're kind. They're doing it because they see that this one group of people have been ruled out. I mean, if I don't raise a riot or anything, but can I say Jewish lives matter? Not black lives. I just probably now just starting a riot. Because the only people God cares about is his brethren, the Jews. And this is a group of nations, a group of people who have taken care of the Jews in the tribulation period, not knowing nothing, 
and they get entrance into the millennium with Jesus Christ there as king That's not a church age doctrine. I can go over to Jerusalem, take care of all the Jews I want to take care of and able to take care of. I don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will die and go to hell. Then shall he say unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed. Uh, what he knows. Into everlasting fire what do you think that is Jesus never preached about hell there it is a fire that firefighters will never put out prepare for the devil and his angels not only told you that's hell he told you what hell was made for it was never made for man Hell was made for Satan and his angels. For I was unhungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you. Notice how it's just one verily. Notice that? It's not a verily, verily. This is a verily I say unto you. Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these. Who? The Jews. Ye did it not to me. Again, these people did nothing for the Jews. Jesus takes it personally. There's a group of people that helped the Jews. Jesus said, you helped me. What do you mean? We didn't help you. Yeah, when you took care of my brethren, you took care of me. There are a group of people... Uh, what do you mean? We, we, what do you mean we didn't visit? What do you mean we didn't do this for you? You didn't do it to my brethren. You didn't do it to me. Remember when Paul is on the on the road to Damascus and he speaks to Paul. He says, "Whom thou persecutest." Well, who is he persecuting? He's persecuting the Christians. And Jesus took it personally. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. For what? Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ? Not believing on the Lord Jesus? Absolutely not. For their conduct of the Jews. But the righteous, those who took care of the Jews, into life eternal. What a difference of salvation. That salvation, 25 verses 37 to 46, is a salvation based upon works and works alone. And they're not even know they're doing the works. So is it possible for a group of people who end up with Jesus Christ and have no idea they're going to do it? Absolutely right. We just write it now. Can there be a group of people in the church age that, that end up in heaven and not know it? Absolutely not. Because you've got to believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. That's a must, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. You must say with your heart and you must say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't say it, you don't believe with your heart, you're not going in. There's a vast difference in the dispensations of salvation. That is taught, guaranteed by the Bible. 